We're going to focus on uh, prostate cancer. Uh, we're going to talk about benign prostatic enlargement. We're going to talk about the prostate in general. And the prostate uh, is probably, as we get older, gentlemen, the most vulnerable part that we have. The prostate is thought to be in a secluded and difficult place to find and examine. But as you can see from this, uh, it's fairly close to the area that we can access with uh, a rectal examination. So as you can see, uh, it's within fingertip. And uh, a lot can be learned by uh, the sense of touch. The healthy prostate has a very predictable feel to it. Benign prostatic enlargement, that's when the prostate gets big. And I would like to give you a metaphor. Think of the prostate as a donut. And what we're talking about when we're talking about prostatic enlargement is symptoms that men experience, which we'll go through here in a moment, but they're, they're the symptoms of inefficient boarding. So if you look at the uh, prostate as a donut, then think of the area where the urethra runs through it as the donut hole. Now you can have a big donut with a small donut hole, or you can have a small donut with a small donut hole. So prostatic enlargement really, for the most part, is referencing what's happening to the, the passage through which the urine flows. We're going to talk about minimally invasive treatment. And you really get right down to it, minimally invasive treatment is taking over surgery. One of the things we notice as we go through uh, the decades is that without fail, prostatic enlargement this stands for benign prostatic hypertrophy, BPH, uh, enlarging prostate, is a very predictable event. Our awareness <coughs> of inefficient bladder activity many times can be related to what's going on in the prostate. And when this is severe, it truly interferes with the ability of the bladder to empty. Now the bladder is a very uh, uh, capable organ in accommodating this increased resistance to flow. And what happens is the bladder muscles get thick, and as they get thick, they can push harder. So you might have a situation where the resistance is high, but the bladder capacity goes down. So one of the things you would see possibly is great frequent urination, but still have a fairly decent stream. This is the volume of urine, <coughs> and this is the um, uh, velocity of urine, passage of time of urination. And as you can see, as you go through the ages, the uh, uh, <coughs> volume decreases, as does the flow of urine. What is BPH? Well, it's just a matter of what happens to us as we get older. Um, tennis players play doubles. Golfers ride in carts. And our prostates create changes that we accommodate to so much so that we don't even recognize that it's a problem. It can't be prevented, but it can be treated. And it can be treated in a number of ways. We're going to do it describe a specific way, but there are many ways to treat it. So as you can see, the normal situation and then the situation where the prostate has enlarged and obstructed the channel through which uh, urine flows. So these are those symptoms. Uh, you can read those getting up at night or having to go to the bathroom very urgently. Uh, for instance, when you get out of your car and you're fumbling for your keys at the door and have that tremendous urge to go and you just can't wait till you get in the house to empty your bladder. That's all part of obstruction from a prostate that's enlarged to the point that's interfering with efficiency. This is the symptom index score. This is extreme weak, you have to strain and so on. 
And so then you add these up and you come up with a score. And the scores are mild, moderate, or severe. For very severe um, problems with boarding, more aggressive interventions are needed. What I mean by intervention, I mean doing something to you. But what we're going to talk about is the minimally invasive and transurethral needle ablation. Uh, it's an elegant procedure. It relates to radio frequency. Well, this is a radio frequency generator, and radio frequency creates, among other things, heat. Selectively, you can cut down the volume of the prostate if you apply radio frequency in a, in a manner that I'm going to show you. This is the prostate, and these are the radio frequency uh, delivered lesions that are created. And as this goes through its healing phase, the wall of the prostate becomes thinner. Therefore, the space that the channel that runs through the prostate called the urethra becomes larger and the efficiency of pushing fluids through here, which is the bladder's job, is less work. And less work means that the bladder can work in a very efficient manner. The bladder is a very unique organ. It has muscle bundles, and think of my fingers as muscle bundles, that at the appropriate moment can be energized and contract, and they just literally empty the bladder by doing this. On the other hand, as we all know, <clears throat> our bladders can get pretty full, and we can have large volumes. And the one thing that's unique about the bladder muscle is that it has compliance. And what that means is these muscle bundles can slide one over another and you can get a very large bladder without any pressure. Bladder muscle can get thick when it has to work against resistance. It not only does it get thick and it pushes harder, but it loses some of these compliance characteristics. And that's where the urgency and frequency come from that are used for that. They're called anticholinergic drugs. I'll mention a few, uh, Detrol, Ditropan, Enablex, Vesicare. Many patients, uh, we don't have a lot of bother with those that increase in symptoms or back to work fairly quickly. Um, long range, there's very few side effects. And many of the other treatments, such as the laser therapy and the transurethral resection, for instance, do have a negative impact on the sexual competency. Probably the most common thing is called retrograde ejaculation. After treatment of the type we just talked about, as the months roll by, that urinary flow continues to increase as the atrophy or shrinkage of the prostate occurs and the urethra becomes uh, larger and allows urine to flow more efficiently. And the symptom score goes down. This procedure and one that called Prostiva is another radio frequency system but does similar things. Uh, is easily done in the ambulatory surgery environment. And actually, uh, most of the treatment that we use now, we do in the office. Afterwards, there's not much to it. You can walk away and go home and get on with your life. And that is what I see as the benefit of this treatment. The vast majority of the patients who fit that appropriate selection grid do very well and for much longer than we really thought. As a matter of fact, uh, I counted these up not too long ago and done close to 400 of these procedures, and I think we've done six secondary procedures.